This uh, down here is uh, version 1, so this was actually the original <laughs> uh, version of the RFID Guardian. Um, we actually started by uh, using some uh, commercial off-the-shelf hardware from another company. Uh, this uh, was a development kit from a company called Strategic Test, and it had a uh, uh, platform here, uh, which is, uh, well, you can see this uh, single board computer module. Uh, this here uh, clips out, and this uh, is a uh, uh, PXA270 uh, X-scale processor. This was the very first uh, board that we were using uh, for our RFID Guardian experiments. Uh, we eventually decided to migrate away from it because it was uh, a closed platform, <laughs> and uh, also because it was commercially very expensive. You can think of this uh, development kit as the uh, kind of nervous system of the uh, of the uh, uh, platform. What we did do then is build uh, our own analog front end, <laughs> which uh, well this uh, at the time was the uh, tag receiver. Uh, this at the time uh, was the tag transmitter. Uh, this right here, uh, what you can see on a piece of green protoboard, was a uh, RFID reader on a chip, uh, which is what we were using for communicating with tags. And here is a, uh, a little bit of a later addition, was a uh, Bluetooth uh, module. The idea was basically to uh, create a system that could copy the functionality of the entire version 1, uh, but then that would be small and compact and could look cute for a photograph. That was the entire project definition, pretty much. Uh, so what he did is, you can see here, uh, there was uh, the first of these connectors. Uh, for the uh, processor module. So basically what we did is we took the uh, uh, PXA270 module, uh, th that old Triton module, and we basically clipped that uh, into here. Uh, here is basically some power management circuitry, and here on the front uh, you can see an AM radio chip, and basically the uh, transmitter and the receiver were integrated uh, into the same board. Some of the issues though with this were, uh, first of all, you can see some pretty little variable resistors hanging off and a couple of cute little wires. Uh, these are bug fixes. So this is how you fix bugs when you're doing hardware. It's You can't just, you know, retype the code and hit compile. It, it doesn't work quite that easily. The other thing is uh, we just basically had one of these. Anytime we had to fix something, it very much uh, broke other things. <laughs> there was very little uh, modularity in this system and we basically figured that we want a system that's more modular uh, because we think that we can do this uh, better. Version 3. <laughs> uh, here you can see uh, we actually have two copies of uh, version 3. Uh, one is with, uh, well, the touch screen. This is the same touch screen uh, that we showed you uh, before. <laughs> and uh, basically, if you look at this, uh, the first thing that you can see is basically. Uh, if you check this out from the bottom, you can see now the same uh, connector. Uh, this uh, connector was also for this Triton module from Strategic Test, uh, that commercial module that we had purchased. Uh, but what you will see uh, that's different, uh, we have uh, on version 3 for the first time a, uh, an FPGA uh, for signal processing. Uh, we also have uh, a lot of connectors uh, for exporting uh, the different pins. You can also see that uh, there's lots of basically little baby boards. <laughs> uh, we also have JTAG here, but this is actually on a completely separate board. <laughs> and we also have, uh, for example, the power management uh, circuitry is completely on the bottom. <laughs> we deliberately separated these boards out because uh, that way when debugging we were able to throw out pieces of the system that were broken. So we could only redesign. We'd be able to just redesign the portions of the board that were broken. First of all, uh, we wanted to get rid of the uh, commercial uh, single board computer module. So you can see here with, uh, well, again, this module now is something that we completely produced ourselves. Um, this right here is a black fin digital signal processor. Uh, this can run Linux, this can run uh, ECOS, which is the real-time operating system that uh, our system runs. This has a lot of uh, flash memory SD RAM. 
And again, the same connector. We made this pin compatible with the old uh, Triton hardware we were using. But the difference here is this is completely open source. <laughs> uh, we also wrote our own bootloader, so there's no more really stupid conditions uh, on this. And beyond that, um, we can produce this probably for a cost of about 30 euros. You can see here there's uh, two uh, JTAG uh, interfaces, one for the uh, digital signal processor in the Blackfin board, and another one for the FPGA. Uh, you can't see it right now because it's covered up but by the uh, analog front end. You can actually see what this looks like in the version that doesn't have uh, the analog front end on it. Uh, this one right here, uh, this uh, is our Cyclone 3 uh, FPGA. Uh, you can also see this is the connector here uh, for the uh, analog front end. You can kind of see how this is uh, connected in here. Uh, you can also see these two uh, connectors on it either side. These are basically uh, expansion connectors. All the pins of the Blackfin um, DSP that we're using are exported. So this allows people to basically be able to co cobble together their own uh, extension modules. And let's say they think, you know, the Guardian would be awesome, but we really would like to have it with GPS or whatever. The point is then they can just uh, basically build their own uh, board, basically be able to stack it. Obviously, we're still uh, busy debugging uh, this analog front end, but uh, we're hoping that we're finally going to have uh, the entire system, which, as we said before, was meant to be commercially mass producible. We're going to try to have this ready by Christmas. Definitely, I think uh, within a year, uh, we're going to have uh, something finally that uh, we can put up on the market.